Okay, let's continue. Previously we uh, added Wi-Fi, but we didn't use it for anything. So now I would like to set up a, a, a HTTP server that will just uh, uh, allow us to reach the device and uh, yeah, do something. So uh, let's get going. So we have Wi-Fi here, but as we saw in the last few times, it's important that the moment the main function ends, um, it will basically shut down. Uh, and I think what happens here is when this variable goes out of scope, it will disconnect the Wi-Fi because that's what it does on its uh, destructor. Uh, but we don't want that. Uh, we want to stay in this uh, in this method because, and that's why we actually need to give it a variable because we're not going to do anything with it, but uh, with a variable at least, but we need it to be alive. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a loop. Uh, that's a uh, uh, thread, I think. Mm. So do we have a sleep? Standard thread sleep, and then we do duration. Was it from seconds one? So a, a lazy loop that uh, will keep it inside. So uh, we're ready to go. Um, the method we are looking for uh, will be the ESP HTTP server. So let's serve a mutable server is HTTP server uh, new. Uh, I think we can add a default here. Right here. I need to reference it. Now we have a server and the server we can, oh, we need to unwrap it. So yeah, for, for REST developers, all that unwrapping feels a little bit dirty. Uh, in proper server-side applications, we, all, we should really do better than unwrapping. But uh, in this case, there's not an awful lot we can do. Like uh, either it works or we crash basically. And yeah, we can't really escape that fact. I, I could make it a little bit clear like it could, I do expect and say something like um, server failed or something like that that would be a bit better panic but in the end it's still unwrapping and for simplicity sake I'm gonna leave it there so now we have a uh, yeah it's an ESP32 server so let's uh, register something um, server we need to register a handler for URL so Let's just take the root uh, and we call the method uh, a get method. Let's keep it simple. And then we need to supply a function. So we are going to supply a lambda. So request and we're going to uh, deal with that. Mm. So let's keep it really simple for now. Uh, the way we uh, create a, a, a response object, we create it from the request object. So we create a let mutable response is request into uh, OK response. So that's a standard 200 like uh, response. Then um, we need to write something. Oh. And we need, of course, unwrap that. We unwrap everything. A response, we write uh, uh, a byte buffer. So we say hello from ESP32C3 uh, as bytes. That should do it. And unwrap, why not? Uh, and finally, we need to return something, and that's an empty OK. And now it's more or less happy, it's warning, because I need to uh, 
and wrap this one as well. All right, that looks okay and not all that difficult. A lot of unwrapping though, but let's see what this one does. Uh, same thing. Okay, so that's interesting. It says that it's too big and it doesn't fit the app partition. So there's a standard um, configuration to uh, to uh, share the the uh, persistent storage. And because we are including standard, the images tend to be pretty big. As you add more code, it doesn't get much bigger quickly, but it starts pretty big. So uh, we are just uh, crossing that line. Uh, I've faced it again in my um, previous uh, project as well. Uh, you can supply a manual partition table. Let me show that. Mm. Right here, it's a CSV file. Uh, it's it's not. Uh, it's basically you 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 end up shuffling around uh, different spaces. So the more you use as the app, the the less you can use for other things. Uh, I've I'm actually not very deep into this, but I got this to work. So we have a file partitions.csv. So we touch that. And we uh, add the contents, and then we need to re refer that from the SDK config. It's not defined now, but I'll pick that up as well. Uh, where was that SDK defaults? And you see that it here is uh, configuring a custom partition table. So we point to that file. The, this is. Yeah, there's a whole lot of up directories, but it, it gets called from pretty deep down. So let's roll with it. Let's try again. Okay, the build worked, so that's good. Now it's uploading. can see it gotten a little bit d bigger again because now the HTTP uh, libraries are included. Right, so it's starting. It's connecting to Wi-Fi. You see that it is um, uh, pinging and it started HTTP server. You also see that it's now not exiting because otherwise you always said like main function exited and it would disconnect the Wi-Fi. So let's scroll back to where it uh, shows its um, uh, IP data. Where is it? Yeah, right here. So there's DHCP that will give an IP number. So that's 10, 11, 12, 1, 6, 9. And let's try to connect to that. So uh, we can do a curl, HTTP. We paste this one and I think we just, uh, root should be all right. And there we go. It says hello from the ESP32 C3. So that is... Uh, Quite nice, I think. Um, let's uh, do one more thing. Uh, right now, uh, aside from that, it's not doing anything. It is nice, I think, to do something that really shows it's on the device. And that's, um, let's see if we can do something with a pin. A pin is basically all of those, uh, yeah, if I point here, there's all those those headers. They are generally GPIO, so general purpose IO pins. And you can use those to control something. Uh, the easiest thing is a, is, a, is a light, a LED, but it can be anything, right? It can be a stepper motor or a, a valve or whatever you want to connect. So uh, 
to do that we'll need to um, uh, take control of one of those so um, let's first start with creating um, getting a pin and that's uh, we call it led pin and we get that from the peripherals and we say gpio uh, pins yeah pins gpio and let's take io number five and i know that will um, uh, trigger the onboard led to uh, uh, and turn on or turn off i need to add a pin driver for that pin driver uh, output pin driver so uh, this is an output pin so an output pin means that you create uh, a pin that you will control the you set it based to high or to low and um, that's something you do for for example showing an led you can also make an input pin if you want to respond to a button press or something so um this should do something uh, that's a result because we would need to unwrap and now we have a pin driver of gpio 5. Uh, if i show the types again those types are pretty intimidating uh, it has a lifetime which is a, a bit scary about some rust projects the gpio has a specific type and also that output is a generic and it's a bit weird it took me a while to really grok that to because it's a part of the so-called type state pattern and what it really tries to do is make sure that at compile time you really can't do it wrong in the sense that if you want to set the voltage you need to have created an output pin and if you want to listen to it, you need to create an input pin. And normally in something like C, you just uh, need to configure it. But if you forget, you won't get any compilation errors. You just get runtime problems. So uh, this is actually quite nice, but the types sometimes get a little bit uh, intense. So, but now we have a LED pin, which is owned here. And we go, we want to use it in, uh, in our... Uh, a function handler because we would like to uh, control that from the from the web endpoint um, but we can't just do it because this is like a mutable we need to pass it mutably and this is like a a, 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 a lamp that can, can get called many times so what we need to do is to make it into arc mutex so they you make an arc new and then we need mutex uh, it's important to take the right mutex because there are a few new and then we put the pin driver inside so now it, uh, this one wasn't important yet like this uh, and now we see it's arc mutex of the pin driver i don't think it needs to be mutable actually and now because the arc is clonable uh, and the, the mutex we can lock this should work so we take the led pin we lock it in the mutex and um, mm -mm -mm, what you can do we can just uh, oh we need to unwrap it because the lock might fail and then we can toggle it so if it's off we can toggle it on and if it's on we can toggle it off uh, there's one problem here closure ah, okay so it, we need to add move because we need to move the ownership and that's not a problem because it's an arc and this returns a result so it wants to unwrap as well all right everything seemed to be happy let us see uh, we go back to our other terminal here we go Compilation was quick. Uh, 
All right, so it's starting now. Pinging a few times to verify the connection. And it's up and running again, so at least it didn't break. Now let's see what this does. Look at that. So to uh, I will uh, maybe increase the size of the view a little bit here. So if I call the the web service, it will blink the LED light because that's uh, controlled by three pins, three, four, and five. That's red, green, and blue. And uh, we were um, toggling five, so that's blue. So we can turn it off and on. So to show that it's actually really using the Wi-Fi, I can disconnect uh, it from my computer so it will power down. And I have here just a, a power bank, which is a uh, yeah, battery. Uh, plug this one in so it will power up. Uh, and we are going to give it a second to warm up because if we do it now, I think yeah, it doesn't connect yet. Let me uh, move this one up a little bit. Yeah, now it works again. So we can't see the output here because this probably has like a broken pipe because we disconnected it. But uh, now it's basically autonom autonomously able, if it has some power, it can switch off, on or off something, which is uh, pretty cool. Thank you. See you next time.